On October 25, 1866, three sisters came from Lyon, France to Galveston, Texas to care for the sick and to minister to the many children left orphaned by epidemics and other disasters. They are individuals who are uh, attracted by the call of our founder, Bishop Claude Marie de Bouy, our Lord Jesus Christ suffering in the multitude of sick and infirm of every kind seeks relief at your hands. Hidden in a quiet corner a few miles from downtown Houston, you'll find Villa de Mattel, the mother house of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. The four primary ministries of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word Houston are education, healthcare, social concerns, and spirituality. We're in uh, five countries, uh, El Salvador, Guatemala, Kenya, Ireland, and the United States. All I require for life, God has given me. God's presence isn't only in the sounds of music. Sins through it rings more quietly in these classrooms and clinics. So this is not a job for me. This is a ministry. So we're all about helping people. I think we are each given a, a limited number of years on this planet on Earth. And it's a real opportunity to use our time and to focus on assisting those journeying with us, especially the poor and vulnerable and they certainly in turn enrich us. The Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word are women from many cultures and countries who have heard each of them individually a very personal call in their hearts to respond to Christ's suffering in those in need in our world. Today we are impacting lives in towns, villages, classrooms, and healthcare centers from Africa to Central America, to Ireland, and to the United States. Bishop Claude Marie de Bouy was a French missionary who became the second bishop of the Catholic Diocese of Galveston, Texas in the 1860s. As the leader of the church, Bishop Dubuis saw an immediate need for help. There were many problems in the diocese that he had to contend with. Um, there were immigrants who needed care. There were families who were displaced after the Civil War. And what really terrified the people of Galveston was the threat of yellow fever, which was attacking the Gulf ports. Dubuis went back to his home in France to ask for help and found three nursing sisters at the Antikaya Hospital in Lyon who were willing to make the journey to Texas. The three sisters were Sister Mary Blondine Madeleine, Sister Mary Joseph Roussan, and Sister Mary Ange Escudet. Because of their commitment to the healing ministry of Jesus Christ, the sisters ran the first Catholic hospital in Texas called St. Mary's of Galveston. They also opened Houston's first hospital, St. Joseph's Infirmary. They took care of orphans that had been displaced by the Civil War in a little house beside the convent. And they worked at the charity hospital. Not long after the hospital opened, Mother Blondine developed yellow fever and passed away. Sister Mary Ange also caught the disease and eventually decided to return to France. Mother Joseph was asked to lead the young congregation. She received more sisters into the congregation to help and assisted in the growth of its ministries in healthcare and education. In 1900, all would change on the island when the great Galveston hurricane hit. The 1900 storm devastated Galveston. Uh, it killed over 6,000 people, and among the 6,000 were 10 of our sisters 
and 90 of the orphan children that they were caring for. Um, that, uh, that storm is a focal point in our history. Um, it reminds us of death and resurrection. If she wouldn't have helped me, I, I don't know where I'd be today. I, I really don't know. Today, the sisters continue to take care of the sick and vulnerable in hospitals, clinics, and long-term care facilities. They direct the Christus Point of Light Clinic in Dickinson, Texas, and Christus St. Mary's Clinic in Houston. As sponsors of and in partnership with the Christus Foundation for Healthcare, the sisters serve people who have no insurance or very little. We as Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word believe that healthcare is a basic human right and not just a privilege. And because it's a basic human right, everyone should be entitled to access to health care. Most of our patients are actually hardworking um, people, and they're not looking for freebies. They really are just in a bind at one point in their lives, and we, help, we want to help them. Well, I know where I'd be without, without them. I'd be, you know, go, go, going as long as I could and going to the emergency room. I sure feel like I'm blessed by them being here. We're part of three major hospital systems. One is Dignity Health, where we co-sponsor the Catholic hospitals that are part of Dignity Health. Another one is um, Sisters of Charity Health, which is in our, our nursing home in Ireland, and we sponsor that. And the third one then is Christus Health. Carrie Gorn House in Ireland provides the complete continuum of elder care. The sisters operate schools for children and literacy centers for adults. They also provide a home environment where children and young adults can pursue their education at local area schools. When we help the poor and vulnerable in our society, we are lifting their life. The situation where they are today, they will not be the same. For example, when we give them the gift of education, the gift you can give to anybody, the best gift you can, they will help them, they will get a good career. And from there, they will start helping their families, their society, and the whole world. Education transforms and enables people to live quality and fulfilling life. We have a child in our outreach program who came when he was abandoned back home. And we took that child, we took care of him, we took him to primary school, to secondary school, and to college. And now he has a job, and he, is, he has gone back to help the family members, to his brothers and sisters. And you can see there is a great change in the family because of that one child. Here I am king of the happy time. In Houston, the sisters offer literacy programs at St. Austin Center. There, adults learn to speak, read, and write in English to improve their quality of life and the lives of their families. Some go on to get their citizenship, GED certification, and even college education. It is a very nice place to, to learn because they it is the same, they are very passionate and don't feel embarrassing when you need to speak or read. The clock is in front of me. I am hoping to continue to learn, to, and to get my GD and see better job opportunities. And in the United States, in our strategic plan, we've identified three areas to, to look at immigration, 
human trafficking, and families in need. The human trafficking is a big issue because it's a, a way to slay the people. They don't feel free. They are frightened. Human trafficking take away the dignity of the people. The sisters collaborate with community organizations on immigration issues that include helping immigrants settle into the U.S. by assisting them with applications for citizenship and supporting them with basic human needs. At Villa de Mattel, anyone seeking healing and prayer in an environment of beauty and quiet can receive spiritual direction at the Ruah Spirituality Center, either as an individual or in a group setting. Our retreat center is the Ruah Center, uh, which welcomes people of all faith. Uh, they register to make a day of prayer or to make a longer retreat, and there are uh, spiritual directors available, and the grounds are available to walk during your retreat. La congregación tiene tres centros de espiritualidad. Las personas que eh, participan en los programas de que la con, o los espacios que la congregación proporciona a la, a la población son personas de diferentes eh, nominaciones. Eh, personas de diferentes eh, religiones que vienen para y asociados también asociados y laicos religiosos religiosas que vienen para profundizar en su fe y en su relación con Dios We have a glorious past, but we also have a great history yet to be accomplished. So we look with great uh, confidence and hope and joy to the future as we really look to the Spirit and discern where we're being called to do even greater things. As their mission moves forward, the sisters will continue to stretch their hands across the globe helping the elderly in Ireland, the poor and marginalized in Central America, the children and adults in Kenya, vulnerable families in Houston, the sick and underserved throughout the United States, and wherever God leads them. It makes me feel happy and be grateful to God for what we Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word we are doing to the whole world. The Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word consciously and courageously look to a future full of hope. Praised be the Incarnate Word.